Hello and welcome back. Previously, we went through single degree of freedom in free vibration and we neglect the effect of damping ratio. Later, we solved the same question considering the damping ratio. Now we are going to have uh, a new solution for the single degree of freedom, but this time under harmonic sinus load. Again, we can neglect the effect of damping for the beginning and later on we will go through the damping effect as well. Consider a single degree of freedom system connected to a spring with the coefficient of k and the mass of system to be m. But this time we are going to apply the force pt which is p0 times sinus omega t. This omega is different from the other omega that we had earlier and we will see how this affects the solution. Again, we need to sketch the free body diagram, mass of m, we have a spring force which is k times u and we have also inertia force which is m times u double dot t or m times acceleration. And this time we have also this pt which is p0 times sinus omega t. If we write the equilibrium equation we will have mu double dot t plus k u t equals to p0 sinus omega t. Uh, this is the second order ordinary differential equation but this is not homogeneous it has a result which is not zero. To solve this we need to solve the homogeneous equation and then for finding the particular equation or particular answer we need to apply this p0 times sinus omega t as well. The solution of homogeneous or better if we divide the entire equation first by m we will have u double dot t plus k over m ut equals p0 divided by m times sinus omega t. As we remember, we assume that k over m is going to be omega s square. Omega is called natural frequency. Again, we need to solve the homogeneous equation and then solving the equation for particular solution. U double dot t plus omega s square u t, this is homogeneous equation, equals to zero. Then we will have characteristic equation r s square plus omega s square equals zero and r will be plus minus i omega. The solution for homogeneous part will be a1 cosinus omega t plus a2 sinus omega t. But this is not the answer because the equation is not homogeneous. We need to find out the particular answer as well. For that, if omega is not the same as omega, that's very important. If they are the same, then it will be completely different. We can solve it uh, with that option or later on we will see how to solve it considering uh, being the same value for omega and omega. Then as far as the particular solution is a factor of sinus we will write down that particular solution for this will be b1 cosinus omega t plus b2 sinus omega t. You can find the solution with the basic differential of equations for second order ordinary equations. U dot P will be minus B1 sinus omega T plus minus B1 omega sinus omega T plus B2 omega cosinus omega T and U double dot particular solution will be minus B1 omega square sinus cosinus omega t minus b2 omega square sinus omega t and then we can just substitute the solution to the main equation main equation is u double dot t plus omega square ut equals to p0 over m sinus omega t we need this equation and the other one from here minus b1 omega square cosinus omega t minus b2 omega square sinus omega t plus b1 omega square cosinus omega t plus b2 omega square sinus omega t equals to p0 over m sinus omega t now here Cosinus omega t in the right hand of the equation is zero as a result minus b1 omega s square plus b1 omega s square 
equals to zero. As far as we assume that omega is not the same value as omega, then B1 should be zero because, and from the other one, from here, minus B2 omega square plus B2 omega square will be P0 over M. And from here, we can find out B2, which will be P0 over M times one over omega square minus omega square. Uh, it's uh, better if we simplify this parameter. We know that omega is a square root of k over m. As a result, omega square is k over m. And m will be k divided by omega square. Now we can rewrite b2 equals to p0 omega square divided by k times 1 divided by omega square minus omega square. If we divide numerator and denominator by omega square, then the parameter b2 will be p0 divided by k times 1 divided by 1 minus omega divided by omega power by 2. In dynamic of structures, this value of omega divided by omega is written as a factor of beta. So we can continue. B2 is P0 over K times 1 over 1 minus beta square. And beta is the frequency of the harmonic load divided by the natural frequency of the system. Now we can come back and rewrite the solution, which is the summation of homogeneous solution plus particular solution. Consider that for the particular solution, you don't need to apply the initial condition. You just need to solve it for the equation without considering the initial condition and then come back to write down the total answer, which is homogeneous solution plus particular solution. A1 cosinus omega t plus A2 sinus omega t plus P0 divided by K1 over 1 minus beta square sinus omega t. Now we can apply the initial condition. We know that t equals to 0, u0 is u0 and u dot will be u dot 0. First, let's take a derivative from the equation by respect of t minus a1 omega sinus omega t plus a2 omega cosinus omega t plus p0 over k omega 1 minus beta square cosinus omega t. u at t equals 0 will be a1 plus 0 plus 0 equals to 0, u0, and then a1 will be u0 u dot at t equals 0 will be 0 plus a2 omega plus p0 over k omega 1 minus beta square. So a2 will be u dot 0 divided by omega minus p0 over k times omega divided by omega divided by 1 minus beta square. And we know that omega divided by omega is beta. Now we can rewrite the equation u t as the displacement, the time of t will be u0 cosinus omega t plus u dot 0 divided by omega minus p0 divided by k beta divided by 1 minus beta square times sinus omega t plus p0 over k times 1 over 1 minus beta square sinus omega t. Here we can see that we have three terms u0 times cosinus omega t. Omega is the natural frequency, the first term. The second term is u dot 0 divided by omega minus p0 over k beta over 1 minus beta square sinus omega t. You can see that these two are relevant to the natural frequency of the system. And the last term, p0 divided by k times 1 over 1 minus beta square times sinus omega t, of which omega is here, the frequency of the load. So this part is different from the other two. This is the STD state vibration, while the other two are transient vibration. So it is called transient vibration, and this is STD vibration. To understand it better, perhaps it is good to have a simple example uh, to see how it works here. You can see that even if u0 and u.0 are zero, still we have some kind of transient vibration starting because uh, p0 over k beta divided by one minus beta square is going to make some vibration, which is transient. This is the response to the harmonic load 
uh, consider that we assume omega is not as same as natural frequency. Later on, we will go through that topic as well. That's the end of this video. Uh, in the next video, I will go through one simple example to see how the equation looks like in graphical shape. And also we can find the maximum displacement of the system based on the applied load. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.